Hi, good afternoon. I'm Carrie Brace with Dark Horse Cues, and this is a tutorial on how to turn a uh, 1.375 inch diameter dowel um, 18 inches long on a 4 axis CNC machine. I'm going to be using my Percheron CNC machine, um, and I'm using Fusion 360 for this design. And I like Fusion 360. It's really got it's got a lot going for it as far as ease of usability goes. So let's start right off. We're going to do a sketch. I'm going to create a sketch and I'm going to do this on the Y and X plane with the Z going up. You can see your axes over on this and how they're set up in this plane. So going from there because I'm doing a rotational head and I am do simply doing, this is really good for doing profiles since I deal mostly with making cues. That's what this tutorial is about. And that's what these tutorials are for, are for cue makers. So, <coughs> excuse me. So I'm going to draw a rectangle starting at zero, zero. I'm gonna make it 18 inches long and I'm going to do one half of 1.375 is 0.6875. But you can do this if you don't feel like calculating that out. Notice that I'm in the 18 inches here for the length. Once I've got that in, hit the tab key on your keyboard. And you can type in simply your full dimension, 1.375. And then the division key, just like you would in divide by 2. Enter and it comes up as 0 0.6888 or 6875 actually. Um, when you do the inspection you can select how many your precision on this thing so I can precise this and you can see that the length is actually 0 0.6875. Um, it's just it just rounds it up on once you get past three digits and this this is fine for what we're doing so so I've got my rectangle here and I need to make it a solid so I'm gonna to go to solid and I'm gonna extrude it now let me get this on a little isometric view so you can see what's going on it isn't necessary for you to do the full width of your dowel we're only going to be facing along one face and so I'm just gonna go 0.1 inches tall. You can either type that in or you can highlight it and type in 0.1, whichever way you want to go, and hit enter. And it creates this solid. This is only a tenth of an inch thick. It doesn't really matter what we're doing for thickness here unless you have an issue where you're going to be needing the, the head of the machine to be moving in over the top of this full dimension. <clears throat> um, I do this on a 2D drawing because it's a lot easier as far as your um, your your cutting goes. So once we've created this and we've got all of this and we know where our origin is, we're going to go from design to manufacture. And let me go back to design for just a second. When you started drawing, notice that it's in inches. And it says that it's in inches, and that's okay. But when you go to manufacture in Fusion, it wants to default to millimeters. Um, this is one thing I've asked them about, and they're like, well, most people use millimeters nowadays, but just change it to inches because you don't want to this to be doing, unless you have your CMC machine set up in millimeters, you want to make sure that your drawing is in inches. So we've got this set up, especially for your G-code. Um, and now we're going to do a new setup. And it defaults to the middle of the material. I think so. You're just going to be cutting and surfacing this. But we're not, we're going to actually, we want to use this point down here. And notice that the stock material, it gives you a um, oversize on the stock. I don't want any oversize on the stock, on the side or the top. I'm just going to go zero. And that means that my stock is exactly the size that I want it right now. And I'm going to go back to the, the setup side of the machine. And I'm going to do the 
in the origin, just the model origin. So here's my zero for my x-axis because it rotates along this, and the y in the positive, so this is y in the negative, and z in the positive up here, and z would be down in the negative. And we've got, so we've got our origin set up, we've got our material set up, we've got the stocks, what we want to use for stock. And in the post process, right here, you're going to call it what you want. I'm going to just say minus 18 inch by 1.375 inch dowel. And I'll be using a three-wing cutter that has a diameter of 1.25. Whatever you use, you'll need to be putting this in for yourself. But it's a 1.25 wing cutter. Put inch in there, 1.25 inch. Click OK. So now I've got my setup here. I'm going to do, be doing a 2D contour. When you click on these, you can do whatever you're wanting to do, slot or trace or thread or whatever. But in this case, I'm doing a, I'm just doing a 2D contour. And when it opens up up here, you want to make sure that you're able to spread this out as wide as you need it. I'm going to spread it a little bit. Notice when I grab this and move it that that disappears and it's hard to get back. So I like to kind of make sure that it's wide enough so that I can read everything. And I'm going to select my tool. Get my tool base over here. Under my library, I'm going to be using, where is it? This one right here, 1.25, and select. I've got it set up so that it's a cutting feed rate of 20, 20. Um, lead in and lead out is the same, 20 inches per minute. The ramping feed rate is 6.667. No, it doesn't. I don't use ramping on this particular path, so it doesn't really matter. I can turn. You can leave the flood on or disabled. If you're going to be using a CNC that has a relay for shutting off and on your spindle, and if you're using something like a router, um, you can set it up as mist to shut on. And off so that it turns on and off when you're when you start your program but I don't do that I'm just going to disable it and I've already selected my tool and then up here are your tabs just like any other one I'm going to select on geometry and when you're here the contour mode is, is selecting this pocket recognition selected contours we're just going to select this outer edge on the bottom and notice that it's automatically feeding it at a climb feed rate or a climb mill going for this direction but notice that it also goes all the way around the, the the material and I don't want that I only want to cut on this one face and this is something in Fusion 360 that you first have to select the whole face that the whole edge that you're going to do and then delete it and then select hold the alternate key down and select just this one edge. This allows me to put my dowel or my material, my rough stock, in my CNC machine along the x-axis and turn it on and have it spinning and just run down this face. Now, the I have a piece of wood that's one and a half inches by one and a half inches and that means that from corner to corner on the diagonal it's like 2.25 I don't want to try to hog this all off in one pass so I want to do multiple passes and this is one of the things reasons I really like Fusion 360 is when you get down here to your passes I can go roughing passes so that my step over can be whatever I want now I want my final step over to be 0.05 and I can have my first one step over wherever I want, but because I'm just doing a rough dowel and I want this to be something that I can do fast, I'm going to leave it the same, 0 0.05 for my step over, excuse me, and I want to do it in three passes. So if I set this up as two, I've got two here and one here. So that's it for my final pass. And on your linking right here this is your lead in and entry and it, it comes down that the, the if 
you just hover over these, it'll show you what it's going to, what it'll do. It's another reason I like Fusion 360 is that you can just hover in and it points to exactly what you're doing in that, um, in that particular diagram or part of your tooling path. And once we select this, so I have it set up as a, a one eighth inch lead in radius and a one eighth inch lead in distance and comes in at 90 degrees and the lead in and lead out are the same. So they're same as in the lead out is exactly the same as the lead in. I'm not using a ramp and I don't really care about position or anything like that. I'm just going to click OK. And you can see what I was told what I was talking about. Here's your one eighth inch radius lead in, and one eighth inch radius radius lead in is like that. So it comes down on its first pass and moves and cuts along, and then it goes down to the end and comes back. I did not. I'm going to go back. If you have to edit this, just right click on it, select edit, and under your passes, you can have it going from left to right or right to left, whichever way you want. I like my cutter going from right to left. Um, this is what's considered a climb mill. And if you hover over this, it'll tell you the difference between these climb milling positions and the conventional mill. The conventional mill works really good um, for some things, but because you're using wood, it works better if you're not trying to chip deep cuts in and coming out. It will chip away wood, especially when you're doing like burls and woods that have grains that go in a, uh, different directions. It's better if it's climbing in, if it's cutting as the router bit is turning, if it's cutting in and scooping into the material, um, kind of like you would with a chisel. Um, it just cuts a lot smoother and a lot better. So that's what I use the sideways composite competition compensation and go okay. Now this has got three passes on it and once you've got that you can hit simulate which is the simulate key right here and on your bottom of this it'll if you just hit play it'll come down and go back do all three cuts okay you can go faster or slower on that so you can also in this it'll tell you how long it's going to take three minutes and 12 seconds the total machining distance almost eight feet altogether um, the statistics it gives you just where the movements at y position and at where it ends up in, in the outer position and i'm going to close this now so i'm happy with the way that this is all all came out the um, things to remember are that my zero is at the beginning of my dowel and the eight to minus 18 inches. And this is just the way, way I set this up. You can have your origin at a, a different end. You can have it on the outside. I it's try different things. Let me know what you like, but this is the way I like to do it. Um, the, a lot of people set this end up as their origin so that they're starting at 18. Just remember that when you do that, that you need to um, set your cutter up and mark this as 18 inches cutting down to zero. And the machine will, Fusion 360 will do all of that when it posts the process. So we're going to go up here and post the process right now. And let me pull this window over so you can see what's going on here. I'm going to might, minus my name and numbers, minus 18 inch by 1.375 inch dowel um, using a 1.25 inch three wing cutter. And that's the file that it goes out to. And this, the, one of the important things along this, fourth axis mounted along that along the x-axis. So right here under save free tracks, there's a couple choices here. G28, which means that when the machine is done with all of its cuts, and it retracts after its last cut, the head will come up to and go to the G28 position. And in your CNC machines, you should have this already defined. Most of the times it's defined as X0, Y0, Z0. I don't want to use that. The reason why is because when the cutter comes down, I'll move this out of the way, when the cutter gets done with this last cut and moves up, the head will move over here and drop the cutter right down to that position and crash it into your material. I don't want that. You don't want that. Um, I do clearance height. That means that I've got it set up so that the clearance height is 
and we're just going to get post and I'll show you what it means by clearance scythe. So I'm going to post that and save it to my NC file. Make sure you have, I create a shortcut on my desktop for this. I'm going to hit save. And I can view the CNC code. The, so it's going minus 18. This is the name of the program. This is the cutter you're using. That's the tool that is set up, is it? The diameter of the tool, uh, cutting compensation, where the zero is. It's a flat end mill or considered a flat end mill. G90, G94. If you're not familiar with G codes, um, I could tell you all about them, but this is a short tutorial, tutorial on this, and I'm hoping that you have some previous knowledge or you should at least gain some previous knowledge. Um, M5 is to turn the machine on and uh, the T tool and M6. The M3 is the speed for the spindle motor and G54 is where its absolute starting point is. It says G0, the angle is at zero on the ro X rotational axis. Doesn't really matter, you could add that in here, but it doesn't, there's nothing in, in there for it to be done. And it tells you where the machine is. G0 is a go-to movement. Um, it'll take the, the machine head, no matter where I have it set up, and take it to X as a positive on the 0.125, and Y as a minus 1.7855, and that'll go to the height of 0.7, that's 7 inches, 0.7 tenths of an inch uh, above the, the stock, and then move it down to 0.3, then it'll move it down, and it's going to do this, F is the feed rate that it's feeding this in at. And remember, we looked at this, um, the ramping feed rate that's when it's slow it comes in and i i like it to kind of come in nice and slowly and we're gonna then it goes to this is the first set and this is the jog movement in the circular rotation and it starts feeding it at 20 um, inches per minute and it will go from here to x minus the g17 this is one whole movement into the minus 18 inches and then it comes out and goes back up and returns back to the beginning and goes through the same process again notice that right here this is point minus 1.735 is the distance it's a 0 0.05 difference between here and here um, so it moves in that much closer on the second pass does the third pass and when it gets done to the end M30 is the end of the program, and it just does this, the safe retract to the G0. So that's your G code, and that's what you're going to take over to the machine. Um, thanks for watching this, and follow along with the rest of the video to watch the cut. Okay. Um, I'm doing this short video to show you guys how I find the center of my lathe bed using the tool that I have in and it can it doesn't matter what tool it is as long as you know the dimension of your lathe bed in this case it's 2.25 inches wide and my tool is 1.25 diameter in for the whole round so if I set the edge I'm going to lower this and bring this over so you guys can see what I'm doing a little bit better. Sorry, I'm going to hand hold it so it's probably going to be not as smooth. But I want to make sure that I clear the edge of the bed. So I'm going to bring it over a little bit. And I'm going to slow my speed down to about 10%. And then I'm going to bring it down so that it's almost touching the bed. Mm. sure that that's low enough and then I'm going to rotate my cutter over and right now I've got about an eighth of an inch I'm going I know that I can bring it over that far so I'm going to turn it past this and then slide this over and rotate it And I still got some clearance there. So I'm going to slow this down to 5%. Bring it over a little bit more. 
And I've got the blade passed, so bring this in. Now, if you've got your machine set up with G54s and everything, that works really good if you don't ever have to change any of your X or Y locations. But in this case, since I'm always locating for doing inlays and stuff and I don't have a consistent one, I usually just reset this um, a few times or I'll set it when I'm getting ready to do profile cuts for shafts or butts. So now I've still got... A little bit of room there. I'm going to bring it over just a hair more. Now there's just a little bit, so I'm going to change this to steps. And I want—I don't want to be stepping over one hundredth of an inch. I want to change this so that I'm stepping over one thousandth of an inch at a time, and change this from jog mode. So that when I step over here, you can see it's just changing at a, a tenth of it, a one thousandth of it. So I'm going to bring this in. I'm just going to step it over. And once I've got it really close, I usually just go by sound. You can hear it. It's just touching. I'm going to back off one. Let's see if it goes back. Still touching. And according to your bit that you're using, there might be a little bit of run out. I'm going to bring it over to this one. And I'm going to start backing off until I can just pass that by. Back it off three thousandths. Still heavy. Back it off a little bit more. Three thousandths. It's just, just touching a couple more. by now until it's not hitting anymore I don't hear it you can hear one click that's pretty darn close so notice that it says minus 1.7463 the width of my lathe bed zoom back out here the width of my lathe bed is 2.25 and the width of this, half of this is 0.625. So half of my lathe bed is 1.125 plus 0.625 for half of the diameter of the router bit, which adds up to 1.75. Now, if I put this in at 1.75 minus 1.75, That means that when I, let me change the speed on this to 100 and get it off of jog mode and just raise it up. If I go to MDI and type in G0Y0, or since I've done this many times today, hit G0, Y0, that's a go-to movement, G, just a movement to Y0. When I hit this, it'll slide this over to the middle of the bed. Now, when I originally found the middle of this bed, I marked a little X in it using an engraving bit so that I could um, set it up a little bit easier every time I do a small engraving bit. But with a big bit like this, it's just a lot nicer. It's a lot easier to do this. Um, that being said, if I 
if the blade is accurate and my lathe is on center and this hasn't been shifted or moved, when I cut this 18 inch dowel, 18 inch uh, piece of paduke down to 1.375, it should come out as 1.375. There is always a little bit of give on your blades which means that there's just a little bit of run out, three or four thousandths. I, I don't think that, I mean, I suppose if you spend hundreds, hundreds of dollars on a blade, you might get one that's got almost no run out at all. Using a really good, precise collet like this one from uh, Think and Tinker really helps on your run out versus just your regular, using a regular chuck that you might get with your router. Um, they're not very accurate as far as what you're trying to do for your CNC machine. So I really recommend that you have a really good collet system and buying a good quality bit. This bit is from MLCS and they only run about 20 bucks each. I really like them because they're really heavy duty. They got a half an inch shank. They're very stable and they're pretty darn accurate. So we're going to do that 18 inch cut on this dowel and set it up. Oh, one last thing. I know where the height of the bottom of this bit is to be zeroed on the center of this for, for height. And I have that set up here so that I know that it's um, using T-Tool, a 1.253 wing cutter, Z0 equals minus 1.95. If I just lower and touch the bottom of this down onto the table, let me get my tab set up here and lower, change this to like 10%, and bring this down so that it's just close to the center of the table and just touch it. I can lower it and be exact, but I have a half an inch of material here, and I'm just going to look where my setting is. It says minus 2.16 because I had changed the bit. So I'm going to change this to minus 1.955 and hit enter. And now if I type in G0Z0 and hit enter, my bit will rise up and let's check out how close this is to being in the center. You can see that I've got plenty of I'm right at since I did that to the middle of the thing, it's just really close. This gives me my cutting edge. And you can, with these, you know, if it starts getting dull on one spot, you can cut up here or cut a little lower. Um, they would, at 20 bucks a piece, I can usually cut 30 or 40, maybe 50 pieces of wood um, before they start getting dull and I replace them. But at that cost, it's really not too bad. Um, I sometimes when they start chattering a little bit, I'll put in a, um, I'll mark on them that it's for rough cut only because I don't want any of that um, vibration sh showing up in the wood as chatter marks. So I'm going to stop this video. Okay, I need to know where the beginning of my piece of wood is. This is the piece of paduke that I'm going to be turning with this cutter bit, the 18 inch that we did in the on Fusion 360. So I'm going to bring my router head over to where I think it's close and I'm going to take this off of there again just so you guys can see what I'm doing. I know that if this if this spot is zero on my X plane and I know that the bottom of this router bit is 0.2 inches wide which it is because I've measured it and if I we're going to lower this a little bit more. Actually, let's just rotate this up. Now lower this down a little bit. I happen to be really lucky right now because I had already kind of set this up. But let's move over to the right so you can see what I'm doing. There's a little bit of a gap there. 
just slow your machine down to about 5%. Of its total. Uh, uh, Just bring it in so there's like almost no gap. You can step over if you want. If it, in turning dials, you don't have to be very specific. There's just a little bit of a gap there. And I want this to be, since this is zero, uh, where the center of the bit is, is actually 0.1 on my x axis. So up here, I'm going to change this to 0.1. So now I've got that set up as point one, and I can pull up my program, go back to my program, and this is the minus 18 inch by 1.37 5 inch dowel that we did on Fusion 360 that's got three passes on it. And I'm going to set this up to run with my cover so you can see. So let me show you.
Okay, um, I'll finish cutting. Got all the sound out of there. Hope you guys have enjoyed watching this video. I'm just removing the dowel here. I'm going to measure it with the calipers. And I want to thank you guys for taking the time. Please send me any questions or anything. And I'll continue posting more videos. Let me know if there's something you need to see or something else you want to watch. Um, came out pretty darn close to 1.375. I'm pretty happy with that for a rough cut. Thanks again. This is Carrie Brace from Dark Horse Cues. Y'all have a good evening.